Hello everybody, my name is Harriet, I'm a PhD student at Kent as well as at Kew Gardens and at the moment I'm writing up my doctoral research on Pillus. So Pillus is the Cornish name for a largely forgotten grain that was once significant in parts of Britain and Ireland and it's basically a type of naked oat which means that it doesn't have a hardened hull like regular oats so it can be easily threshed by hand meaning it was significant for subsistence farms in the past and over the last three years I've been piecing together its more or less untold history so although it was long ago abandoned in terms of its traditional cultivation it did remarkably survive in seed banks which has allowed me to take a practice-led approach to exploring as well as its history, its revitalization. And combining these two aspects, the history and the revitalization, has been really insightful for revealing more widely the opportunities, challenges and complexities of recovering eroded biocultural diversity. So whilst it's something um, is anchored by something really specific, these insights can be applied to other people-plant relationships, particularly to cases of other endangered crops. So this is my granddad and I together on his sadly last birthday in 2017. A very significant and special day, primarily for that fact, but also because it was the day that he introduced me to Pillus. So granddad was a Cornish language and, and a pretty active figure in the movement to revive Cornish, which actually went extinct as a community language in the 1700s, and he and his wife Jan saw Pillus as a lost component of Cornish agriculture whose conservation would complement a wider Cornish cultural revival. And on that day, his wife Jan took me out into the garden and showed me a patch of seedlings that she was growing and gave me some to take home. But don't be fooled, this isn't quite the romantic lost and found story of endangered seeds passed down through generations and saved from disappearance. After a couple of years of growing them, I was actually heartbroken to discover that I wasn't, in fact, the keeper of a lost Cornish oat, but actually of another kind of naked grained oat that is frequently confused with pillars and, and has been for many centuries by scientists and historians alike. At first this was a real frustration to me but it's actually since become a really interesting theme of exploration in itself within the PhD, that of ethnobotanical authenticity. And this theme of biocultural authenticity or inauthenticity you might say crops up historically too so I've been actually now weaving insights from an interesting past case of mistaken botanical identity by several Cornish cultural revivalists active in the 1930s, including this guy, the gardener William Watson, who attempted to revive Pillus in the 30s, but was also working with the wrong seed. So the research has evolved now to become a tale of two naked oats by the way of the fact that Although one of them, Pillus, is native to Western Europe and the other, um, the more common naked oat, actually originated in China um, and Mongolia, processes of parallel evolution and domestication have actually led to them looking uncannily similar and to their histories having become intimately intertwined. Herbarium specimens have revealed so much about the past distribution of both these naked oats um, and this is one of my favourite specimens, it is Pillus and it was collected uh, near Land's End in 1667 by John Ray and Francis Willoughby um, where it's described as having been widely cultivated and sold at a price of no less than that of wheat. And another thing I've been doing is mapping historic field names relating to the crop, which has given a really interesting image of its past distribution, not only in Cornwall, but actually also more widely in Britain and Ireland. I've also spent a lot of time combing through archives, looking through old letters, maps and documents like wills and land deeds for any mention of pillars, which has yielded so many insights into its, its historic significance.
and exploring the wider history of Pillis outside Cornwall, as well as contextualising this within the broader culture of oats, has led me to research trips around Ireland, as well as around Wales, where I connected with farmers there working to revive Welsh heritage oats, and developed also a collaboration with scientists at the University of Aberystwyth, where they do a lot of research on oats, who've since been working um, with Pillis using plant material that I supplied them to characterise the genetic diversity, nutritional content and growth habits of the crop, which I've then been able to weave back into my own ethnobotanical research. But hang on a minute, you might ask, I thought the seedlings you've been growing weren't pillars, but that other kind of naked oak. Um, well, actually, once I worked out how to distinguish the two, um, so although they're often misidentified, even in scientific databases, I was eventually able to find and order 21 accessions of pillar seed from around seven different gene banks, which I first grew on at the allotment in 2021. And the following year, I continued bulking up that seed at a couple of different sites. So in 2022, it was grown in three spots um, in Somerset with this guy, Fred Price, who does a lot of interesting work with heritage grains. As well as by Will Radmore, a Cornish farmer who has a very keen interest in pillars. And also as part of a community grains project that I'd established with a couple of friends. So in this case, lots of people got involved in planting, tending to, harvesting and threshing the grain. So this year I partnered with Cornwall Wildlife Trust, who introduced me to some really brilliant farmers. Um, Six farmers took part in a project to experiment with the reintroduction of pillars to Cornwall. Um, so we planted the seed in between April and May this year um, on uh, plots of identical size across the different farms. So each one was uh, 100 square meters, so variations on 10 by 10 um, dimensions and each was treated exactly the same, nothing was done to it. So some were under a more conventional um, farming system and one, some under a more regenerative farming system, but, but none of them um, weeded the crops, put any fertiliser on it, anything like that. It was just left to its own devices. And then everyone got involved in the harvest, so um, the guy you've just seen feeding the grain to his pigs was experimenting with it as part of a, um, an agroforestry system and using it as pig feed. Um, some had planted it alongside um, uh, larger um, fields of larger plots of spring barley. And I got lots of volunteers involved in harvesting the grain, which was such an interesting way of engaging people and I just sort of stood back and let them um, get stuck in but the kind of conversations that came up were interest, really interesting and people um, were reflecting on agricultural change and food and farming systems. Here the whole family turned out to harvest the grain and we all got pretty nifty with sickles. Um, the last uh, grain this year was harvested at the beginning of September and then I had absolutely hundreds of sheaves to deal with so I shipped them all to a polytunnel um, where they were dried out over the course of a few weeks and then I partnered with a farmer that has a uh, well here he is using it actually a, a smaller scale plot combine that we set up as um, a static thresher basically um, so after weighing all the sheaves to see um, how much straw had come off each of the plots and um, stacking them up in a trailer and driving them halfway off across Cornwall to his farm, we then put them through this uh, 1980s Massey Ferguson, which him and his dad um, tinkered with until it was sort of like the best calibration it could be for dealing with this quite unconventional and um, very small sized grain. Um, so we actually got these quite um, 
dirty samples of grain in the sacks that I eventually got cleaned by the a scientist at the University of Aberystwyth. Um, and then came this beautiful, beautiful grain um, that I made oat flour with and eventually made cakes with that I took to each of the farmers. So we, um, just a couple of weeks ago, actually had um, interviews reflecting on the, on the whole project whilst eating like apple and stem ginger cake made from this beautiful pillus oat flour. And that's about all I've got time for. It's just a little dip into the many things I've been exploring over the past few years. But if you've got any more questions or want to connect, don't hesitate to drop me an email or to connect with me on social media where I've been posting updates of what I've been doing. Uh, thank you so much for listening.